the light to the world. First of all, if you're going to be the light, you, how do you live? You've got to walk in the light. Come on. 1 John 1, 6 and 7 says this. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The only way to have true fellowship and connectedness with God is to walk in the light. I don't know about you, but I for one am grateful for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Can we just have a hand for the blood of Jesus? We all need to be cleansed. We all need His forgiveness. We all need His love. We all need His grace in our life. And here's an astounding truth, okay? The only difference between me and the vilest sinner out there on the planet is the shed blood of Jesus. Come on. Amen. I'm grateful today for that. So we've got to walk in the light. And then secondly, we've got to be honest with each other and be honest with ourselves. That's why the next verse says this, 1 John 1, 8. says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. How many of you know it's real easy to deceive yourself and get to thinking you're all that and, and you know... And a cup of chicken soup. You know what I'm saying? You get to thinking you're, you're, you're amazing. But you know something? The truth is, all of us are sinners saved by grace. We can't say that we have no sin because we've all sinned. There's another clip in the movie we're not going to show. The doctor goes into a bar down in the south and winds up finding himself among some very uh, prejudiced people. So Tony, you know, he has to go in and rescue him. And, and as they... Leave the bar. The doctor is upset, obviously, and Tony tells him, Hey, don't compare me to that bunch of southern hillbillies. And the doctor tells him, Well, what if we were, we were in your neighborhood? Would it be any different? Huh? You see, Tony was kidding himself, wasn't he? He was deceiving himself. He was saying, oh, I, I'm not like them. But the truth was, he actually had been like them. Maybe he was changing. Maybe he was coming into the light. But he had been like them. And so we have to, first of all, we've got to be thankful for the blood of Jesus, be honest. And then we've got to also, if we're going to live a life that's in the light, we have got to confess our sins. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then the second point I have for you today is how can we be light in the darkness? Number two, by learning the wisdom of the kingdom. we got to learn to live by the wisdom of the kingdom. How many of you know there's the wisdom of the world and then there's a wisdom of the kingdom? And the wisdom of the world stops at the wisdom of the kingdom because the wisdom of the world, it factors God right out of the equation. The truth is that we need wisdom to be light in the world. Now here's the good news, that if we lack wisdom, and man, I'm telling you, I lack wisdom a lot. i got to pray, Lord, give me some wisdom here. But the good news is he's promised us that if we lack wisdom, we just got to ask and he'll give us the wisdom that we need. All right. And uh, let me give you a little classic piece of kingdom wisdom from the lips of Jesus today. All right. Uh, it's from the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5 and 39 says this. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek. Turn the other to him also. How many have ever heard that verse? Wave at me. Most people in America have heard, turn the other cheek, right? It's a very famous verse. But I also think it's like one of the most unpopular verses. Because there's a lot of Christians that they read that verse and they're like, uh, you know, I'm so grateful that you saved me by your blood. But Lord, I don't know if I'm going to do that one. Huh? Let's be honest. Uh, you know, I don't think I want to. I mean, I'm grateful, Jesus, that you did that on the cross. You're an amazing Jesus. I love you for that. You're amazing. What an example you are. But, man, I don't know if I'm going to turn the other cheek or not. And uh, there's an amazing scene in the movie that deals with this very question. 
How do you overcome evil with good? Romans 12, 21 says this, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How, how do you do it? How, how do you go about turning the other cheek? Is that even a real possibility for us? So we're going to watch a scene from the movie. Dr. Shirley's at a venue, and he's playing in front of some very well-moneyed, high-society people. I think this actually was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's check out and watch how Dr. Donald Shirley handles this situation. Oh, man. How many of you are glad we don't live in 1962? Come on. Amen. Those were rough days. But how many, uh, when you see him point to that outhouse out there, how many of you just thought to yourself, dude, that guy needs a punch in the face? Come on. I mean, he needs someone to fix his wagon. So here's the question. How do you overcome the dark? So I've got three options, all right? There is option number one. And I'm going to quickly fill in this blank. But it's the blank you option. All right, I need to fill that blank in quickly, which means forget you option. I'm not playing. You can strike the guy. Get out of my way and we can absolutely understand how someone would feel in that situation i mean they all came to hear dr donald shirley play uh, you know his piano for them and then you know he's relegated to have to go to an outpost i don't think so and in, in, in truth it's in most movies that option number one is the one they normally take right give them the old you know socket to them the you know, it's Tony's way, you know, boom, and you're on the floor, okay. Uh, you know, uh, then there's option number two, right? Option number two is, hey, it's only a bathroom. Just suffer the indignity. And uh, I, I can, you know, speak for, you know, pretty much all of us males, you know, that we could just pull the car over, and, you know, and do our business. But whatever Jesus was trying to say in the turn the other cheek idea, I don't think that it was an unequivocal option number two. Uh, this is just, you know, that this is just what has to be done. I think that there's actually another option, and that's what Dr. Shirley did. I think it was the most loving option that there was to refuse the indignity, but also didn't power up. Dr. Shirley, now check this out. How many of you realize he was a lot larger, a lot stronger than that guy who told him to use the outhouse? He could have very easily, in fact, he was on the side of the restroom. He could have easily just ignored him, opened the door, went in there, and done what he needed to do, right? Or, you know, he could have just took the, took the guy by the arm, move him out of the way, walk right past him. And there's a part of me and probably a part of you that wishes that he would have went ahead and done it. And there's another part of us who likes option number one, you know, you know, give him a good hard, hard right, right on the chin. But, uh, you know, I, but there's that option number three. And I, I think that's the way of the kingdom. I think it's the Jesus option. It says, no, I'm not going to receive this indignity, but I'm not going to punch you in the face either and there's a there's a great verse in Proverbs chapter 25 verse 21 it says this if your enemy is hungry give him bread to eat and if he is thirsty give him water to drink for so you will heap coals of fire on his head and the Lord will reward you how many of you realize that there's a reward for being kind to your enemies there's a reward for that. And Dr. Shirley's going to receive that reward, I, I, I believe, because he was kind to his enemies, although he did not power up. And I, I tell you, if you want to have a godly kind of a wisdom, how many of you know that God's wisdom is peaceful? God's wisdom is loving, according to the Scripture. So to be a light in darkness, what you have to do, if you want God's wisdom, you've got to stand up for truth. How many of you know we don't back down from the truth? Come on, somebody. we got to stand up for what is true. We've got to say what is true come on but yet we've got to be peaceable about it and uh, we've got to ask God for his wisdom and uh, those must have been difficult days okay number three how to be light in a dark world number three and this is I think the crux of the movie this is the most powerful point of the movie all right by choosing connection friendship compassion and empathy 
This is the kind of uh, uh, this is uh, kind of the theme of the movie. All, and uh, all of those things bring light. Let me say them for you again: compassion, empathy, friendship, connection. You know, the truth is this: How many of you are still with me? That too many Christians don't connect with unbelievers near enough. Amen? Too many Christians don't connect. Too many Christians lack empathy. Too many Christians actually only have friends that are other Christians. Too many Christians lack compassion in their life. But, but those kind of things that I'm mentioning, those are the things that cut through the darkness. And when Tony says to the doctor, hey, I don't make the rules down here. Dr. Shirley says, who does then? And what he's doing, he's pointing out that there's this kind of entrenched darkness. And the question becomes, how in the world do we overcome that kind of entrenched darkness that's there in our world? How do you do it? Well, there's one way you can do it, and that is to do the difficult work of connecting with people in friendship. The difficult work of loving people the way Jesus loves them. The work of caring about our, our other people that are around us. One of the critics of the movie said, oh, this movie is just so formulaic. It's a buddy, you know, road trip movie. Two guys from different worlds come together and, you know, they find out that they actually like each other. And, and it's so formulaic. But, but, but I don't believe so because, first of all, it's a true story. These guys actually remained friends for about 50 years after that trip. And then also, I believe that more was going on than just buddy stuff, all right? They were talking about real feelings. They were talking about truth. They were sharing what was going on with each other. And I want you to have you know that until we can get that place to that place with others as believers, we're not going to be able to shine light into the darkness. But my friend, when you choose connectedness, when you choose to love, when you choose friendship, when you choose to be moved with compassion, on the inside. I believe that light's going to shine out of you. If you believe that, come on. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, there's a fun scene in the movie where Tony's wife made him promise that he would write her every day. And uh, th this is a real fun scene. It's funny, but has a great point, all right? And so here it is, the letter. Boy, old Tony just didn't get the cowbell thing, did he? Uh, uh. But I really like that clip because it's not only is it kind of funny, but it's about two guys becoming real humans to each other. Uh, they chose friendship right there. They chose challenging one another. Tony's family is becoming real to Doc Shirley, and Doc Shirley is real with Tony. And, and I'll have you know that that actually is the way God's has a plan to shape each and every one of us. God's plan to shape us are the people that are around us. Proverbs 27 and verse 17 says this, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of a friend. And when we choose connection, when we choose empathy, when we choose compassion, and we make friends uh, it's going to have a powerful effect on our life. And so the question I have is, when was the last time you intentionally made a friend who was not a believer? When's the last time you invited someone out for lunch who wasn't just exactly like you, who was different? When's the last time you actually fellowshiped with somebody maybe of a different generation and got to hear their story and how they viewed the world? That'll strengthen us and make us what we ought to be. And I think that that's one of the great messages of this movie and, and of the Word of God. Because when we choose love, when we choose to be with each other, you're going to find out that, 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 that we're the ones that benefit from it. Amen? Amen. 